Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Hello. Oh, it's you, Mama. You're up so early. Why, thank you, Mama, and happy birthday to you, too. Why shouldn't I wish you a happy birthday? You're the one who did everything about it, not me. I just got born. What? Yes, of course, I feel much older. He's shaving. No, he hasn't said a thing about it yet. Yes, I'll be over after breakfast. We can take my walk together. I think Dr. Rowland wanted to make a marathon dancer instead of a mother. Bye. Who was that? That was Mama. She's up early. Anything special? Mm, No, not exactly. She just wanted to know how I was. Hmm? How are you? Fine. Don't you know yet I'm always fine? I don't know. You don't look like you. I don't. You look a little older. I don't know why I should. Do you? I guess that going to become a parent gives you a certain maturity. Well, you don't look any older to me. How can you tell? You can't see through the lather on my face. Well, so long. I'd better finish shaving. Hey, don't I get anything before you go? What for? Because I'm always fine, and I look older. What do you want, a razor blade, maybe? Maybe, but I don't think so. Some lather, maybe? Haven't you got anything else at all? A kiss, maybe? Mm, Sounds interesting. I think you'd prefer it without the lather when I'm all shaved and pretty. I close my eyes anyway. Mm. Now, wipe off the lather. You wipe it off. You're the one who put it there. I haven't got time. This is a very important day. It is? I'm having lunch with my new partner. Oh, is that all? It's still an occasion. That's the way I feel about you. Good. Let me see. There was something else. Something very important I had to remember about today, and I've forgotten what it is. Maybe I can help you remember. It's December 29th. Mm, December 29th. December 29th. December 29th. Mm. Four days after Christmas, two days after New Year's. Oh, sure, sure. I remember... This is the day I want to send that uh, pair of tweed slacks to the cleaner. Oh. It might interest you to know this is an important day for me, too. I'm turning over a new leaf. What's the leaf? I'm making breakfast right now for myself. If there's anything left over, I'm giving it to Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. What about me? Well, if Shakespeare leaves any leftovers, you can nibble on that. But you better be nice to him or he won't leave you anything. What have I done now? You don't know. That's worse. That's how bad it is. Well, I hope Shakespeare isn't very hungry. I hope he's starving. Claudia. Claudia. What is it, Mama? It would be nice if you waited for the light. What light? Oh, that light. I didn't see it. I'm glad the man in the truck saw you. Mm, so am I. What a fine walk they're having. What's the matter with it? One would think you were planning to give birth in Egypt. You've been as talkative as an expectant mummy. I haven't anything to talk about much. Come on, now. Out with it. What did you quarrel about with David this morning? I did not quarrel with David. Then... What did he quarrel about with you? He didn't either. We never quarrel. Now we are getting someplace. What didn't he give you for your birthday? Nothing. Oh, so that's it. I thought so. What's wrong with not giving me anything? Did I say it was wrong? David and I don't have to give each other presents just because it's our birthday. Oh, you said that yesterday. Very sensible of you. Besides, I don't need anything. I wouldn't like to put a Great Dane on a silver platter under your nose. I don't want a Great Dane anymore. Much. Mama, if you could bark, you'd be almost as nice to walk with as a Great Dane. I can't tell you how happy that makes me. Why do you look so glum? Do I look glum? 
There's a mild resemblance between you and the weeping willow. Oh, Mama, David didn't remember my birthday at all. Not even to wish it. Hmm. Well, that happens. David's got a lot of things on his mind. He's got one thing too few. I guess he just plain forgot. I thought you were emancipated. I thought birthdays weren't uh, important to you. They're still not to me. But if David's forgotten and then later remembers and realizes he's forgotten, he'd feel awful and that would make it important. The voice of experience. So you mustn't say anything to him about my birthday. We'll pretend it never happened. Oh, you poor child. Come on home and I'll feed you. Mm, you better come home with me. What have you got? Uh, nothing. Let's stop somewhere and get something. Tell me, does... Shakespeare like Frank Peters? He hasn't said so. That's fine, because I do. Quiet, quiet, my fine Scandinavian friend. If you're big and strong, why can't you be silent, too? And none of your complaints, see? You're going to live on this floor, and you better begin to like it. Quiet, old-timer. How do you expect to surprise her, making all this racket now? Now, here we are. Now, this is the door to your new home. You stay out here. I'm not going to take you in right away. You get it? That's better. Now, take a look. Take a good look at this door. Because from now on, your job is to keep clear of the wolves. All right, now. I'm just going to slip this leash around the doorknob. and There we are. In I go, and you stay out there now. Shh, and quiet. Hello, hello. Anybody home? David. I mean, who wants to know? Who wants to know? A man who wants to know that wants to talk to the lady of the house wants to know. The lady of this house won't talk to just anyone. But maybe you aren't just anyone. You could be my husband. Except my husband's having lunch with his partner. And I'm having lunch with my partner, the partner I live with. Is that David I hear? Doesn't that husband of yours ever do any work? Are you here again, Mother? Here and waiting to be fed. I suppose you came just to take the frankfurters out of my mouth. I did not. I came because I took a good look at my shirt cuff. But he just came back from the laundry. Well, you'd better change laundries. There's a memo on it I wrote myself two weeks ago. What's it say? It says today's somebody's birthday. Whose, I wonder? Mother, is it uh, yours? One birthday this year is enough. Maybe, Maybe it's Shakespeare's. I'll ask him. Maybe we better eat, if you ask me. Oh, come on, David. I'll take care of you. Let Claudia talk to her cat. Thanks, Mother. Lead me right to the table. Hey, wait for me. I'm hungry, too. Frankfurters. A fine birthday lunch they are. You don't even know whose birthday it is. It doesn't matter whose. They're still Frankfurters. It's the second time. Second time what? The second time I've heard a dog barking. Well, I didn't hear anything. Mother, did you hear anything? I didn't. You must have heard it. There, I heard it again. Do you have ringing in your ears, too? Mother, did you hear anything? I think I, I did hear something. Mm. It was a dog barking. Well, well, these are hot dogs we're eating. These aren't talking hot dogs. There. Doesn't he sound as if he's upstairs or downstairs? Maybe he's uh, on our doorstep. Honestly, David, sometimes you talk such nonsense. People don't go around leaving their dogs on other people's doorsteps. All right, all right. Have it your way. Well? Well, since he's not ours, I guess we'll just have to let him bark. Well, thank goodness I don't live here. Aren't you even going to look for him? No, why should I? He's not ours. I didn't realize you had such respect for other people's property. I do. David, whoever he belongs to, it isn't treating him right. He's probably hungry. He smells these frankfurters. Wouldn't hurt if I opened the door and took a little peek at him. No, I don't see why that should hurt. Now, Cody, be careful. Don't open the door too wide. Mama, honestly. Who's afraid of the big bad dog? If he looks nice, introduce me. Well, what are you barking for? Hello. Oh, you're beautiful, you great big, big dog like you. You shouldn't have anything to barking. Well, Dolly, what kind of a dog is it? Mm, not a great dame. Oh, you're such a beautiful baby. I could kidnap you without a second thought. The feeling seems to be mutual. David, see, he likes me, too. I guess he's smarter than he looks. Amazing. He looks just like the great Dane in Mr. Fattery's pet shop. Mm, looks like the same dog. Oh, you're such a darling, you old I love you. <laughs> David is licking my face. Oh, I wonder who could have left him here. 
Junior. He's been here at least five minutes. You think they remember who, where they left him? Mm -hmm. That reminds me. I just remembered whose birthday it is. You did? Whose mm -hmm. birthday? Is it Doggy? Is it not Shakespeare's? Not Mama's? Is it yours, David? Well, in a way, mine, in a very special way. What way? Well, in the way that if it weren't somebody else's, mine wouldn't matter very much. Oh, David, that's very sweet of you. And I wasted all that sympathy on you because I thought you'd forgotten. <laughs> if I had, why would I be needing sympathy? Because I knew how you'd feel when you remembered. Darling, that wasn't wasted. Oh, you birthday present of a dog. You're just adorable. I could eat you up. Don't you dare. You'll be biting off more than you could chew. Oh, David, I could bust. <laughs> oh, he's such a wonderful surprise, darling. Now, come on in. <gasps> it's amazing, David. He still looks just like Mr. Flannery's dog. No wonder he is Mr. Flannery's dog. Darling, I thought Mr. Flannery sold him to someone by the name of Kelly. You can just call me Kelly. Oh, you wonderful dog now. Come on now, babe. Give me your paw. <laughs> just look oh, at her, David. She's just <laughs> such an angel. Isn't that wonderful? If she can go so crazy about a dog, <laughs> what's going to happen to her when she has a baby? <laughs> Don't worry, Mother. The baby won't be half as big as this dog. You've made a very happy David. Oh, and I don't mean just this birthday present. And you've made me very happy, Mother. Because Claudia once had a birthday. David, I think he's hungry. Well, go ahead. Feed him. Feed him by all means. Get the frankfurters. Would you like some frankfurters, baby? <laughs> I knew you'd like them. Here you are, darling. Here's Cla the frankfurters. Claudia, that's our lunch. Mama, would you take lunch right out of this beautiful dog's mouth? Well... Here you are. Hey, hey there. Take it easy. One at a time. One at a time, boy. Claudia, You're a monster. Leave one for me. Just one, please. Should we leave one for her? I should say, just offhand, I think I'd say no. Well, he says he thinks yes. Goodness, look at him. He eats so fast, he looks like he's going to choke him. <laughs> look at him go. Hi, Mama. Here's your old Frankfurt and what's left Thank of you very much. Well, how's that, Sweden? Did you have a good lunch? <laughs> He now, had a good lunch. Now you come here. How would you like another frankfurter? <laughs> well, that takes care of that. No lunch for Mrs. Brown. <laughs> Just think how lucky you are, Mama. I'd like to know why. Because now you won't have to learn how to bark. <laughs> This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Ask Junior to go on an ordinary errand, and you're greeted with indifference or even sometimes an out-and-out -out no. But mention that he's to bring home a carton of Coke, and that's a different story. Same with Dad. He'll have the service station attendant put a case of Coke in the car when he won't stop for lots of other things. They know what they like, that family of yours, and they certainly do like ice-cold Coca-Cola. Why not get the New Year's Eve supply today? Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, Whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>